Everyone loves a road trip, especially around a beautiful state like California. So here was my goal. I wanted to drive my 1990 Jeep Cherokee on a 2,000 mile trip around the bottom two thirds of California. Now I've gone on some road trips as a kid, but I hadn't really gone as an adult to really see the details and look at the things I wanted to see. I've seen a lot of California. I mean, I've lived here all my life. And as far as my Jeep, I've taken it out camping and to the snow and I've beat it up in Southern California quite a bit, but I've never taken it on something like a 2,000 mile trip by myself. Now I had just rebuilt the top half of the engine a few months ago and I did know my way around the vehicle pretty well with the wrench because I had, well, replaced pretty much everything in the previous five years. So my plan was to head out in this 30 year old vehicle by myself and do a solo road trip. I could stop where I want to stop. I could go where I want to go. I could sleep when I want to sleep, get up early, late, pretty much do whatever I wanted to do. My only real target was to meet up with some friends halfway through my trip near Sacramento, California. I was gonna hang out with them for a couple days, but other than that, I'm gonna do this trip by myself. I'm gonna to go to a lot of places I haven't been since I was a kid, a lot of places I've never been before. So I decided I'm gonna bring a couple GoPros so I can share my trip with my friends when I get back. Well, it's taken me a while to edit all this footage because I don't have a lot of free time and there's a lot of footage, but I wanted to start presenting it to you guys to share my road trip from winter 2016. I hope you enjoy. So I'm here at Sandy Anita Park. It's opening day, day after Christmas, and uh, it's the first day of my road trip, and I figured this is the perfect place to start off the road trip with. So this place has got a lot of really cool history. Even if you're not into horse racing or gambling or anything like that, it's just a really cool place just to hang out. Knowing I was gonna leave the day after Christmas, I was like, okay, I gotta start out here at Santa Anita. So Santa Anita Park is a really cool place to come watch horse racing and has great views of the San Gabriel Mountains. But there's also a lot of really cool history here. And there's even some living legends, like this guy, five foot tall paddock guard, John Shear. In 2011, a horse got loose at the paddock at Santa Anita, and he instinctively threw his body over that of a five-year-old girl. He was trampled by the horse and ended up spending months in the hospital. When John got out, he went back to work here at Santa Anita, and you'll see him here almost every race at the paddock. Well, I could only stay for two races at Santa Anita. I said goodbye to a couple friends, and then it was time to really start this road trip. really cool because it kind of separates the two iconic parts of Los Angeles. It separates the kind of gridlock, traffic, freeway, urban, dirty kind of uh, you know, part of LA and, and the beach. You know, the gorgeous Pacific Coast Highway, sand, volleyball, you know, these two kind of uh, total iconic views of LA but these two totally different parts. It's really cool and you're driving, you hit the Marcler Tunnel and then boom and all of a sudden changes. Really neat. One of my uh, kind of favorite cool little things about LA, uh, first time I went through it, I was just like, oh, I was not expecting the view I got when I went through.
Milton. Uh, Milton just kind of a junction road here. There's two places I'm gonna stop at in Milton. Uh, one is Pea Soup Andersons, which is kind of, there's like three or four Pea Soup Andersons in California and they're kind of just like another kind of road trip stop kind of place. They sell pea soup and it's, it's pretty good. It's not bad. But um, I'm going to stop by there. I got this big thermos and I'm going to see if they'll fill it up with uh, their pea soup. I got 24 ounces of hot Anderson's pea soup for $5.50. So. I tried twice on two different roads to get to the high mountain campground and uh, failed both times because there were road closures within a few miles of the camp. So really frustrated, I had to make these big loops around, burn probably an extra 120 miles of gas. Then um, I drove down a bunch of like different access roads. I was just going by GPS, I had no data so I couldn't look up where there's other campgrounds. I could tell I was in the forest because of the shading on the GPS, but as I was driving around, I kept seeing these are private ranches and finally got to another dead end. I kept looking until I finally found this road that was OHV road and I drove up it and ended up getting way up to this area. I kept seeing areas like, okay, I could camp there. I want to find something a little more remote, trying to find some little area, maybe with some trees that I could so I found this kind of fairly rugged OHV road. Didn't realize how rugged it was until I got over the second berm. So it's basically just drop off on each side. And I get to a point where I'm like, I can't, I don't know if I can make it up this. And I'm not sure what's past it. And I ran up there at the flat, like flashlight, which like, I, I can't make it up this thing. So I'm at about probably a 20% grade going uphill and I have to back back down it about 30 feet which anything with like, if you know off-roading and stuff, you don't want to back downhill. So I was really scared. I, I once in the desert on a simpler road, I high-sided uh, a small compact car doing the same thing. And I realized this, I wouldn't high-side, I would just simply roll down the hill into who knows what. And where I'm at, there's nobody around. It's the middle of the night. So it's like, I, I have to navigate this thing down the hill. Thankfully, I put really good driving lights and a good backup light on the car after getting almost lost out by Cuddy back about two years ago. So really, I mean, I say this in all seriousness, I think by the grace of God, I was able to back down this hill slowly, four wheel low, and then make about a 20 point turn where I just found an area that had about four feet of extra room to one side. It still, it sloped down. So I was like, every time I backed up, it felt like I was about to go off the side of the hill, but I was able to take my time. My heart rate was just pounding. I was able to turn around and then go back up this other ridge that was, that I'd come down. And it was just like, uh, so all in all, I mean, nothing terrible happened. I didn't roll the vehicle or die or <laughs> anything like that, which if I would have panicked or I would have really freaked out, that could have been a thing. So now I don't even know where I'm at right now. I'm just to the side of the road. I found a clearing where I could set up a tent. The tent is set up. My uh, 
heater going in it to try to warm it up. I got my uh, piece of Anderson's that's still warm from the thermos and uh, stars are absolutely, absolutely gorgeous tonight. So it's around 11.30 right now. So there's no way I'm gonna be doing any HF or anything like that, but I'm just gonna basically eat my soup and uh, then go to sleep and then hopefully reevaluate, tear down my tent, maybe cook up some breakfast and then uh, get out of here early, get on the highway early, head up the one, and then uh, hopefully I get to spend uh, an hour or so at the boardwalk in Santa Cruz and make it into my campground like at five or six, you know, well before it gets super uh, cold. So here's my campsite last night, just a little turn off off the road. Not much, the sun has come up, so it's starting to warm up. I'm ready to hit the road.
like halfway between Morro Bay and uh, Santa Cruz. So I'm going to go down here and see what this is. Coaster, see if I can get on that. out front are still used. Yes, they are, as we have this old, wow, really old train out here. They're doing like a Polar Express trip that goes about six miles down the track, six miles back. Really cool, a little fun thing for the kids, so right on. Keep it real, Santa Cruz.
is daybreak here at Memorial Park in San Mateo County. And uh, we got in here last night around uh, a little after five. It was really nice to have time to set up. I actually worked a little HF, talked to a couple guys on 80 meter, actually worked really well. Uh, talked to them in, they were in Utah and kind of the uh, Reno area, Nevada. So yeah, I'm cooking some breakfast right now. So you can see over there, there's the Jeep and the tent. There's the campsite, I'm cooking some breakfast. So that's my 35 foot vertical. I have set up with this little Palomar on on and uh, ground wire. So it's a pretty cool campground. Lots of redwood trees everywhere. Got this guy coming in. Definitely sounds like he's not in California. So I'm just heading out from Memorial Park right now, it's a little after 9, and uh, the goal today pretty much is just drive through San Francisco and then uh, head on up to Yuba City to visit Jacob and Rachel, and that's pretty much it, that's the plan. him in Daly City checking out the little boxes made of Ticky Tacky. I'm here in front of the Sutro or Sutro Tower. I'm not sure how it's pronounced, but it's this massive radio tower. So 
I've seen this thing before and I was like, I gotta drive up there. So kind of checking it out, seeing if I get closer, see if there's any details on it. San Francisco is famous for its cable cars. One thing that I think is really overlooked is their collection of vintage street cars or trolley cars like these ones. They've collected them over the years from different cities as they've modernized or gotten rid of their street cars. So San Francisco uses them. So it makes for a really interesting hodgepodge of different trolley cars. I've always said San Francisco is a great place to visit. I can't imagine what it must be like to live there and I really don't want to find out. And really my goal for today is not to visit San Francisco, it's to get to Yuba City. So I'm going to head north across the Golden Gate Bridge and start moving inland. So, limited success here with Walmart in Yolo County. I got some thermals, some extra fire starters just in case it's really, you know, damp or snowy. We ended up camping the last couple days. And uh, there's a, the school when you go to like 
Walmarts in these more rural areas is their sporting goods section, especially like they'll have an entire like three aisles just for camping stuff and like hunting stuff. So their sporting goods section ends up being like a quarter of the store. So it's it's kind of crazy, but uh, they were all out of hot hands. I need more hot hands, so I'll see what I can find.